You know, it's kind of amazing. When you first start with DB2, you really don't care how things are getting done, right? I just need to get it installed. I need to get it functional and I need to accomplish a certain task. But as you grow and mature with a product, it helps to understand exactly what's going on underneath the covers. What's the engine doing? Why does DB2 decide what it's doing? And that's what we're going to cover today. It's a very simple and quick topic. It's actually a single slide in a presentation I'm going to be giving on April 30th at IDUG 2018 in Philadelphia. I'm going to be teaching a DBA crash course that's going to cover this and a couple other basic topics to get somebody up and functional that may be cross-training a developer or a brand new DBA. But what we're going to cover in this slide or this presentation is what happens after you get that initial connection to the database. When I issue the query, where exactly does it go and what's doing the work and what's being touched and how does it come back to me? So let's go ahead and go over to the slide and I'll walk you through the process so you can see what happens. I'm going to be covering what happens with DB2 under the covers as a request comes in. And I need to give credit to IBM's Knowledge Center. I'm going to provide a link in the student notes or down in the description of the video that will link you to a very similar page that will cover the information that I'm going to cover here. I'm just paraphrasing it a little bit to make it easier to follow through. So let's go ahead and start with the end user. This is either somebody on a client remotely or the DBA that's on the physical server. They're going to be coming into the database either through with a client, it will be a pipe or a TCP IP connection, or if you're on the server, you are using DB2 libraries and shared semaphores and memory. But eventually you're going to be connecting into the database and the first thing that happens is you're assigned an agent. This agent is your minion. He's going to do your bidding and he's going to represent you as you are going through the process of getting data in the database. Now one thing I'm going to mention right off the bat because this is a side process that's constantly going on is the agent is going to be writing out information it's doing um, insert, update, delete, whether things are committed or uncommitted, those are going to be written to a log buffer. And as the buffer fills, it'll eventually be flushed out to log. But this is constantly keeping track of what the agent is doing. Now, depending on if you have multiprocessor or you are in a warehouse environment with the data partitioning feature, you may be assigned sub-agents. This is not always the case. You could have zero to many sub-agents. If you are assigned sub-agents, this is just to help you do more, in, more work in parallel to make more efficient use of the resources you have access to. When you are trying to retrieve data, the agents are always going to try to go to the buffer pool first. This is an area of memory in DB2 holding pages of actual data, index information, uh, anything that you were trying to get access to that DB2 can elevate off of disk into memory. And this is a really important part of the ecosystem. This is where all your tuning is happening. A lot of tuning is around how do I get memory to be more efficient? How can I get more information off of disk into memory? Because the more that's in memory, the faster you can get to it. If things are not in memory, your agent has to go out to disk. This is an extra step, so it's always slower, and you have to physically spin spindles, or you're accessing SSD. And though SSD sounds fast, it's still an extra step, and it's still not as fast as being in memory. So if you can't get to things in the buffer pool, the agent's going to go straight to disk, spin it to get the information it has. To prevent this, DB2 has prefetching. Prefetching is always going on and it's trying to get ahead of the game of what you need to bring information off of disk into memory, into the buffer pools to prevent you from having to run to disk. There are all sorts of different prefetchers that I'm not going to go into now, but what I want you to take from here is that DB2 is working to get information off of disk into memory so you don't have to take the extra step to get there. Independent of all of these processes are the page cleaners. The page cleaners are always looking at the buffer pool pages to see what's committed and not committed 
And if there is anything that makes sense to pull back out of the buffer pool and free that memory and push it back out to disk. So it's a pretty simple process if you look at it. It sounds complicated at first, but all you really got to remember is that you're going to get an agent that's trying to write down what it's doing, whether it's committed or not. It may try to get help if it has the ability to get to other resources. It always wants to try to go to memory first, and that's where your speed comes. If it has to, it'll go out to disk to get the information, but DB2 has things on the back end that are constantly working with prefetchers and page cleaners to try to get the information from disk into memory before you even need it.